In this video, we'll try to make an AI to beat Geometry Dash. Emphasis on the word, try. If you haven't played it yet, Geometry Dash is a rhythm-based platformer where the player tries to make it to the end while moving at a fixed speed. We'll first get the game running, plug the AI in, and cry as it fails over and over again. Before we let the AI loose, we first need to let it interact with the world in some way, which means we have to get the game running. So we got one of two choices. First, we could make the whole game from scratch, which would probably involve having to code it up and add some graphics, music and sound even. And I want to stay faithful and true to the original with all of its cool little effects. And I'm not really going to lie to you anymore, I'm just super lazy and this would take a ton of time. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use the existing game and just modify it so that we can read the variables from memory. We download the game and open it up in Scratch since that's what it's made in, and we can see all the coding and the graphics and everything inside. So I'm going to do a little trick over here, where I grab the end position of the level and set that as the start position, and with any luck we should be at the end just by spawning. This is effectively the same as being born to rich parents. Alright, that's not what we came here for. We don't want to cheat, we want the bot to cheat for us. Right now the game runs in Scratch, and if I really wanted to, I could code up the bot in Scratch as well, since I have access to everything, but that would be a nightmare. I really despise visual programming languages, and I really want to do it the good old fashioned coding way, so we have to find another way to be able to interact with this outside of Scratch. Outside the game, we have access to the graphics that the engine renders, and we can feed those raw pixels directly to our AI, but that means that we'd have to feed the bot about 500,000 inputs per frame, and what that means is that we'd have a big model, which takes a long time to train, and drains my resources. All I really need are the X position, the Y position, and the map. To do that, we need a program that can read the memory of the game. For that, I'll use Cheat Engine, and after trying for 30 minutes, I couldn't get the variables out of Scratch. Luckily, there's a way to export the game from Scratch into Flash, and hook into that using Cheat Engine. So we convert our game, fire it up, and we get started or we try to get started. I swear I'm not slowing the footage down. This is actually half as it's rendering. Literally unplayable. All right, I think I see the problem. You see, since the game is lagging, I think we have to press turbo mode. And when that runs, oh my goodness. Wow, I can't even take my finger off the space bar before I'm halfway through the screen. All right, so that's not gonna work. Turns out that my version of Flash was bad, and I needed to download a copy from six years ago to make it work. Never a clean experience with Flash, always a bug. Finally, something playable. Okay, so we fire up Cheat Engine, load up the game, look for the horizontal position, and if we freeze the value, the sprite will jitter back and forth, which represents my mental state trying to reach this point. So we repeat that for the Y position, and now we have our XY coordinates. Now we need to know what's around us on the map. Thankfully, Scratch files are basically zip files, so we can open them up, unload everything, and we can look around. There's all the sprites, there's the music. But what we really want is the code, so we open up the JSON file, and we go down, and we eventually find the level data. And this doesn't look like level data, but the first number is the width of the map, the second number is the height of the map, and everything else is really a grid of tiles. So we can load that up, reformat it, and we can get a usable map. Blocks that are green are normal tiles that you could stand on, and the red tiles are objects that kill you if you touch them. White is just empty space. Time to make the AI. Since the only thing we can control is when to jump, and the map will never change, we can actually make a very simple model. Our AI is just going to be an array of ones and zeros, where one means jump, and zero means do nothing. We'll be using an evolutionary algorithm to help it learn how to navigate the level. The algorithm creates many creatures and gives them a score based on their performance at a certain task. In this case, the creature is the array telling it when to jump, and the score measures its ability to continue its forward motion. Those with low scores are discarded and deleted from memory, and those with high scores are duplicated, slightly mutated, and forced to run the race again. A cruel system, but it works well enough, so we'll turn a blind eye. We'll have 50 creatures per generation and pick the top 3 to propagate their gene line. We could perform the fitness evaluation in Flash, but that means running the game completely for each of our 50 creatures each generation, and that would take ages. Remember how I wanted to avoid coding the game? Well, I'm gonna have to code the game. But at least I don't have to handle the graphics. All I'll do is simulate the math and physics so I can run hundreds of simulations per second to speed up the process. To visualize it and make sure everything's okay, the output of the algorithm will be fed into the Scratch game at the end of each generation. 
Each block is made of 26 pixels, and the player moves 9 pixels every tick. Since we move at a fixed rate, we can actually compress the map horizontally without losing any information. We select every ninth column, remove the spaces between them, and create a new map. The jump itself is basically a parabola, but you fall slower than you jump. Not a big deal, but it may affect our position on larger falls. With all of that in place, it's time to start training. Well, that escalated quickly. Looks like our bot learned how to pull itself by the bootstraps and flew to the moon. Obviously, if I feed this into the game, I won't actually go up that high, and I need to tweak my simulation. This kind of desynchronization between the simulation and the game is going to be a common problem, and will inevitably cause a desync between my brain and reality soon enough. I went back and added a small bar on the bottom that indicates what the AI is trying to do. A green line means the AI is trying to jump, while black means it's not pressing anything. Eventually it learns to not jump so frequently, but we can see the problem pretty quickly. It's trying to jump way too often at the start, and that's because when I first make the creature, it has a 50-50 chance of jumping at each time step. I went ahead and made it jump only 10% of the time. Another thing is that the entire DNA strand changes, and it doesn't make sense to change inputs we haven't reached yet, or inputs that worked perfectly all the way at the start of the level. Most deaths are due to bad reactions, rather than poor long-term planning, so now it just alters the inputs a few frames leading up to its death. The planning looks good enough, so we can get it to feed the inputs into Flash using the memory hooks we got earlier from Cheat Engine. There seems to be some desynchronization between my simulation and the actual input, but it works well enough, so wahoo! I let this thing evolve and play the game once it hits major milestones. Each generation has 50 individuals all playing the game in the background, but only the best in each generation is shown. Enjoy. And it's dead. So our little AI figured out how to beat the first portion, but I haven't yet coded the flying ship mode. Gonna go ahead and implement that. While I'm at it, I went back and completely redid the physics engine because it kept desyncing. So I basically copy pasted the scratch code into Python, which is what I should have done in the first place. Interestingly, because I copied the exact code from the program, I also copied the glitches. While you're falling, you actually have two frames where you're still allowed to jump and the AI exploits that to completely skip this last platform. My baby sometimes has flashes of brilliance. Not often, just sometimes. Back to flying. A few hours of agonizing tweaking and I have nothing to show for it. I spent days trying to fix this, debugging, modifying the engine, but no matter what, it would always throw itself into the spikes, over and over and over again. Can't say I don't understand that feeling. So how did I fix this? Well, I didn't. I was torn between two choices, add graphics to my engine and do everything in Python, or find a way to make the Flash game work fast enough so I can use it directly to compute the fitness. Neither option was appealing, so I decided to put the project to sleep forever. Then I remembered that we did some cheating earlier by spawning in the finish line, and I had a great idea. My child has some deficiencies, so what if I helped it out through the tough sections? I recorded my inputs flying through that area, then got the bot to replay them. At this point, it's more like a task than a bot playing the game by itself, but we'll call it collaborative learning. See this point where the line goes straight? That's where it's just going to play back my inputs. Alright, let's test it out. Hmm, not doing too bad. I could almost mistake this for competence. Almost there. 
And come on, what are you doing? Why can't you even cheat right? I did the whole thing for it and it still died. I guess that just speaks to my own competence. Well, well, at this point, I know there's something seriously flawed with my engine. And as much as I don't like it, I'm just going to have to add graphics if I want to actually finish this. I spent way too much time on this already, so I'll leave that to next time. I hope you enjoyed watching me suffer. I'll be coming back with more content soon. If you've got ideas for another bot I should make, leave a suggestion in the comments.